Presbyterian Church of Kashapton on All Saints Day. If you are visiting with us this morning, you, we are so happy that you have come. We pray that you are blessed. We want you to know God's love is here for you. Happy birthday this week to Stuart Henderson, Denley Slagle, Duke Walters, Ashley Albertson, Tony Bargo, and Jay Gill. Happy anniversary this week to Jeff and Janice Sykes. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries this week? Our community dinner is this Thursday at 5.30. Some volunteers come to cook and do prep work from 3 to 5.15. Others to serve and deliver meals to church members and clean up from 5.30 to 7. Some stay the entire time from beginning to end. If you can contribute food for this meal, we welcome desserts, and ingredients for a toss salad and a fruit salad. If you just want to come and eat with the community, you are invited to come. Eating with the community is as important a ministry as preparing and serving food. Wherever you are, you bring the peace of Christ to a hurting world. I welcome Debbie with an announcement. I'd like to highlight two announcements in the bulletin. Um, next Sunday, we will be having our packing party after worship in the parlor for Operation Christmas Child. We're going to have pizza and some other refreshments. So if you would sign up, that way we know how much pizza we need to order. Also, the rummage sale is coming up in two weeks. Uh, we need folks to sign up for that, and we need men as well as the women. Thank you. Let us worship our risen Lord. Please join me in the opening sentences. Give thanks for all the saints who gather to worship God with the cloud of witnesses in the presence of the Spirit. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. <laughs>
For God so loves the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up men and women to live and die in faith. We confess that we are indifferent to your will. You call us to proclaim your name, but we are silent. You call us to do what is just, but we remain idle. You call us to live faithfully, but we are afraid. In your mercy, forgive us. Give us courage to follow in your way, that joined with those from ages past who have served you with faith. to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share the peace of God. John, after her brother Lazarus dies, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. When we are sad and missing our loved ones, it helps to talk about them, remember all that we loved about them, the funny things they did and said, and how good and kind they were to us. 
It also helps if we have a little keepsake, something that reminds you, reminds us of them. I brought something today. My dad used to have this little dog on his dresser. We called it Daddy's Dog. And after my dad died, I told my mom this was the only thing I wanted. If we ever needed money for lunch when we were kids, dad would tell us to go to his dog and get his change, because the change goes in the little basket on the farm. And we would be allowed to take as much or as little as we wanted. So whenever I see this, I remember how kind and generous my father was, making sure I had money to buy a hot lunch at school if I wanted one. Someday I'm going to see my dad in heaven with the Lord, the one we call our heavenly father. And you will see Jesus and all your loved ones too. Will you pray with me? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all our loved ones who are with us now and those who have already gone home to live with you in heaven. <coughs> Comfort us when we are sad. Thank you for being with us here, now in spirit, as we live as your saints, trusting you each day, and for the promise of living forever with you in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, Amen. <laughs> we had two children who came. These are pretzels. Take a couple of these, right? A little pretzel. Take as many as you who died, and light candles for each one. Martha J. Wolf Schultz. Joseph A. Wilson, Jr.
James D. Norman. Lawanda E. Get. Merle Campbell. Marion S. Phillips. Ivy P. Katra. The congregation is now invited to come forward to light candles for your love. <coughs>
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 19, <clears throat> verses 1 through 10. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. For I must, I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and say, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. This is the Gospel of the Lord. It was a beautiful day. I was traveling to First Presbyterian Church in Cambridge on Wednesday for a special gathering of pastors in our presbytery. When I remembered the words of my husband, he said, don't use the GPS. And I said, I won't. And then I did. Anyway. I didn't trust myself to find my way to Cambridge, a place I had never been before. <coughs> Pretty soon, I realized that I was being led to take Route 541 all the way to 77 South. And in the famous words of Yogi Berra, it was deja vu all over again. <laughs> This was the same narrow, windy, hilly route the GPS had led us when Jim and I and Jacob, our cat Melvin and dog Mabel, exhausted from two days of driving and weeks of packing and saying emotional goodbyes, arrived in a three-car caravan in the dark of night, cold of winter, Deer peering at us from both sides of the road. Just stay there. Just stay there. <laughs> but it wasn't night this time. It wasn't cold. And I wasn't tired or feeling rushed. And I thought to myself, if people in my church can drive this road all the time, I can learn to drive this road too. <laughs> They're good examples for me. Of course, I didn't see you on the road with me. I didn't meet but a couple of vehicles the entire way. One was a slow-moving tractor that I cautiously passed. Another was a large pickup that passed me going about 80 in a 45. Funny thing was that Elton John's Rocket Man was playing on the radio. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. Amen? As I drove this windy, hilly way, instead of the better road that Jim would have me take and that I would choose on my way home, I thought of other journeys taken by the saints who lived and loved among us. And I gave thanks to God for all the saints the cloud of witnesses that surrounds us still, and whose stories continue to inspire us to keep on running the race of faith. 
I thought of Ivy Catra, whose life we celebrated in October. She was a former land girl in England who labored to grow food to feed her country during World War II. She left home and all that was familiar and traveled on the ocean liner RMS Queen Elizabeth to come to America in November 1946. In New York City, she was directed to a train that took her only to Pittsburgh. And that's where her fiance, George Catro, who hadn't laid eyes on her in almost a year, but had written love letters to her every other day, picked her up in his car and brought her to Coshocton. The Reverend Kiss Cadden married them 10 days later in the parsonage. And she lived 73 more years of adventures, loving the Lord, her family, and her church, persevering in times of suffering. Then four days after her 96th birthday, she traveled yet another journey, entering into the joy that Christ has prepared. Hearing the words she longed to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, well done. I got to thinking, what if she hadn't risked risk leaving kin and country. Her life surely would have been different, but we would be different too. We are better because of all the saints, all of you who continue to gather for worship and grow in faith and friendship, welcoming one another, loving one another, demonstrating the hospitality of the Lord. I thought of Ivy and all the saints, the body of Christ in every age, living courageously, led and fed by the Spirit, choosing to follow Christ on the narrow, less, less traveled path of humble servanthood, laboring with love and compassion, kindness and generosity building relationships rather than accumulating wealth and things on the wider, more traveled path of this world. As I drove on taking my very own fall foliage tour, <laughs> it was beautiful that day, I remembered Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken, Two roach diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that passing there had warned them really about the same, and both that morning equally led in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Zacchaeus had choices to make that day that Jesus is passing through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. The rich tax collector, described as short in stature in Luke 19, decides to risk making a 
spectacle of himself by running and climbing a tree because he wants to see Jesus. Scholars say that his stature may have more to do with his profession than his actual height. The crowd may have shunned or barricaded him because of what he did for a living. Jesus could have chosen anyone that day to single out and bless with his presence in their home. He chose no one in the crowd of decent religious people. He chooses instead the one who is marginalized and despised by the crowd of decent religious people. The tax collector is like the one in the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke 18, 9 through 14. He is the example of faith and humility, having the right attitude before God. Zacchaeus' wealth doesn't prevent him from pursuing Jesus and entering the kingdom of God. He has a change of heart and obeys the Lord. Compare this account to, of the rich ruler in Luke 18, 18 through 25, who is moved to sadness, but doesn't obey when Jesus tells him the way to inherit eternal life is to sell all that he has and give the money to the poor, building his treasure in heaven. Then come, Jesus says, follow me. He walks away. Jesus doesn't wait for an invitation from Zacchaeus, for he knows his heart's desire is to be with him. The Lord knows our hearts too, and he calls us by name to leave our places of comfort and privacy and profess and demonstrate our faith. Zacchaeus, hurry, come down, for I must stay at your house today. Everyone heard him say that, and everyone saw Zacchaeus respond. The tax collector immediately obeys and bears spiritual fruit. He welcomes Christ eagerly, ready to give up a life of wealth and accumulation. He is filled with joy, happy to give half of his possessions to the poor, not the tithe of 10% of the increase. He is anxious to right the wrongs that he has done. If I have defrauded anyone of anything, he says, I will pay back four times as much. Salvation has come to the house of one who lives as a son of Abraham and doesn't just claim God's favor because of his family tree. Has salvation visited your home? Have you allowed Christ to stay, dwell in your heart, and change your life? Today is the day to choose the narrow, less traveled path, a road you may not have taken before. We won't find peace in the pursuit of wealth, accumulation, and self-gratification. Only knowing Christ and laboring with him in ministries of compassion will satisfy the longing in our hearts and relieve us from the heavy burdens we try to carry on our own. Our Lord offers hope and healing for the wounded and brokenhearted, order and calm amidst your chaos, help and strength in times of sorrow, sickness, loneliness, and loss. Don't be tempted to follow the crowd of seemingly religious people who want to exclude rather than embrace all people as God's beloved children. 
That's what the crowd did to Zacchaeus that day, the day our Lord passed through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem and the cross to die for our sakes. May we all be freed to show the hospitality of Christ to all people. Let us all join with the Son of Man in his labor of love to seek and save the lost. May we faithfully serve the one whose choice of friends stirred the crowd to grumble. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Some of you are wondering how you will live without your loved ones. Your grief is fresh. Some of you have been grieving a long time, feeling broken, longing to be healed and made whole. God knows your pain. God loves you. Christ is with you in your suffering. I am missing my dad. This has been really hard reading. Wondering how we will get through our first Thanksgiving and Christmas without him. It will be hard. But Christ tells us not to worry about tomorrow. And he's not just talking about material blessings. He's talking about provision for heart, mind, body, and soul. The Lord offers new mercies every morning. Daily manna in our wilderness. Nourishment to eternal life. Christ has promised in his word to come again and take us to himself so that where he is, we will be also. He is preparing a place for each one of us in his heavenly home with all the saints. And one day, when we finish the good works that God has ordained, labors of love in this age. Christ will say to us, well done, good and faithful servants. Well done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the saints, all of our loved ones, those with us now, and those we mourn as they are no longer with us. Thank you for calling us each by name. Reassure us, Lord, of your love for all your children and your good plans for us. Lead us to acts of radical hospitality, walking in Christ's loving ways. Thank you for the promise of salvation by faith in Christ's work on the cross and for your sons preparing a place for each one of us with all the saints. Help us to feel you with us now and always. Grant us strength and courage, help and healing as we seek to obey your will and serve with you in labors of love. In Christ we pray. Amen.
God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit that gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a Spirit a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ, individually members of it. We are all called into the Church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common, common calling to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is God's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world for the ordering and governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and celebration of the sacraments. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of the Presbyterian Church of Kishoka now ordains Jennifer Austin to ministry as a ruling elder and installs her to active service in this congregation. Jennifer, in baptism, you were claimed by the love of God, clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ, and anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you are called by God through the voice of the church for a new service and ministry in Jesus' name. In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, Show your commitment to this calling by responding to these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior? Acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If so, say, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you. If so, please say, I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God. If so, please say, I do, and I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience, in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? If so, say, I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, please say, I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, 
love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? So say, I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? So say, I will. Will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. Do we, the members of the church, accept Jennifer as a ruling elder, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation, to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, say we do. Do we agree to pray for her and encourage her, respect her decisions, and follow as she helps to guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? If so, say, we do. We do. I invite other elders to come forward now to um, lay hands on Jennifer and pray. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. Throughout the ages and in every place, you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We are grateful for ancestors in the faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone, for judges and monarchs who ruled in righteousness and peace, for prophets and apostles who spoke your bold words of mercy and of truth, for leaders and teachers in every age who have nurtured your people in faith and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who gave his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, he proclaimed your reign on earth, revealing your saving love in all he said and did. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon your servant Jennifer, whom you call by baptism as your own. Grant her the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve. Give her a spirit of truthfulness, that she may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living, and rightly govern your people. And loving God, pour out your, your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church, that we may be for you, a holy people baptized to serve you in the world. Sustain your church and ministry, ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthen our service to the outcast, and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together, that we may be effective servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment and share our joys and concerns with one another. I know Barb Moore had something to share for Nikki. I asked for Nikki in your prayers. She spoke that I have a colonoscopy and uh, throat scope. Um, okay, prayers for 
the need for that procedure. Other requests? Yes, Dave. Tim. We pray for Tim and his medical problems. Thank you. Colin. by the fires out west, including all, all the animals in creation, prayers for the firefighters who are fi <coughs> fighting those fires, and what was the next part? A pray for peace in the Middle East. <coughs> okay, blessings of those as we get closer to Thanksgiving and Christmas. Other requests? trust God who will answer our prayers. The God who is with us in life and death. Yes, Rod. How much I remember uh, Donna Westfall in our prayers. She went to the hospital in Zanesville Wednesday for a minor procedure, but some complications developed and she's still there. And we are hoping that she will be released either today or tomorrow. So let's pray for her. Yes, we'll pray for Donna Westfall who is in the hospital. She's not in any pain, but she's recovering from a procedure. Anyone else? Yes. For those who have not yet allowed Christ into their life. For those who have not yet allowed Christ into their life. I invite you to join me in a responsive prayer. <laughs> Holy God, be gracious to us. Deliver your people. You loved us before the world was made. You rescued the people of your promise. You spoke through your prophets. You gave your only son for the life of the world. Hear us, O God. And for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was born of the Virgin Mary, who by his cross and suffering redeemed the world and has washed us from our sins who on the third day rose from the dead and has given us the victory, who ascended on high and intercedes for us at the right hand of God. Great is your love for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the one and holy Catholic and the apostolic church, for the great cloud of witnesses into which we are baptized. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And we continue our prayer as Jesus taught us.
The love of God surrounds you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.